I want to talk about judgment. Somebody said, well, that's not a popular subject. But it's going to happen. And uh, so we're going to look at Hebrews chapter 9 where we use verses 23 to 28 to be our text this morning. Hebrews chapter 9, verse 23. It was therefore necessary that the patterns of things in the heavens should be purified with these things, but the heavenly things themselves with better sacrifices than these. For Christ is not entered into the holy places made with hands, which are the figures of the true, but in heaven itself, now to appear in the presence of God for us nor yet that he should offer himself often as the high priest entereth into the holy place every year with blood of others. For then must he often have suffered since the foundation of the world. But now, once in the end of the world, hath he appeared to put away sin by the sacrifice of himself. Amen. And as it is appointed unto men once to die, but after this, the judgment. In verse 28, So Christ was once offered to bear the sins of many, and unto them that look for him he, shall he appear the second time without sin unto salvation. Amen. Now in the Old Testament, the high priest took blood in for all the people that they represented. And they did it every year. They did it routinely. Over and over and over and over. But Jesus doesn't have to do that. Amen. He just sacrificed Himself one time. Amen. And He doesn't have to keep going back. You, you can't get salvation and lose it and get it and lose it. Jesus only died once to pay for it once. It's eternal, everlasting life if you get it. The only thing is you need to make sure you get it. Amen. And uh, there has to be some kind of change in your heart. There wasn't a change there. You can be trying to keep the letter of the law and that won't get you into heaven. You can get baptized or join a church or try to let your good outweigh your bad. That's what a lot of people... And of course, back Proverbs says, there is a way that seems right to a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. Yeah. Most people think they're going to go to heaven because they're good people. No, we're all sinners. That's right. We all deserve to die and go to hell. I hear all these people, you know, they'll have a loved one down in Indianapolis or some big city get shot. I want justice. Because they can't find out who shot that loved one of theirs. I want justice. Well, I think you better be praying and asking for mercy and grace. Because if you got justice, God's judgment would fall on you. And really... If it wasn't for Jesus justifying us, taking our place, taking him, his, our sins on Himself, That's right. sacrificing His own blood, we'd all be on our way to hell. We'd have no hope. But I looked to Jesus for my hope. Then that one verse there, I'm sure almost all of you probably know that one verse. Hebrews 9, 27, It is appointed unto man once to die, yeah, sure. but after this the judgment. But you need these other verses and read them and put it in context. And that's down near the end of the context, isn't it? Talks about what Jesus did for us, how he was judged in our place and paid for our sins. And uh, but one of these days we're going to face Jesus. He's going to be the judge. Now, right now, today, he could be your savior. But in the future, he'd be your judge. Somebody says, well, that's not true if you're a Christian. Yes, he'll even judge Christians. That's right. You won't be judged as to whether you're going to get into heaven because once you trusted Jesus, you're going to heaven. But you're going to be judged, uh, ju judged on how you lived your Christian life after you got saved. <laughs> and you can get rewards or you can lose rewards. And then the lost people are on the other side of it. They can have more or less punishment 
in the lake of fire, although I don't understand how all that works. But it says if you know more, you'll get more stripes if you don't live right. If you know less, you'll get fewer stripes. It says that in the Gospels. So apparently there's degrees of punishment to hell. Amen. Some people laugh at hell. It's not something to laugh at. That's right. no. It's not something to not believe in. It's just as real as heaven. Amen. Just as real. And Jesus preached about both. He didn't just preach about one. He preached on both sides of this thing. You know, there's only... Uh, <clears throat> you know, death faces every one of us sitting here this morning or standing here since I'm standing facing me too. We're all going to die unless the rapture takes place. Doesn't matter how young or old you are. Well, you know, the older we start thinking about it more. When we're younger, we don't even think about it. It's farther away. We figure we got plenty of time. So we take a lot of this for granted. But uh, it says once to die, we're all going to face death. But the thing is, after you face death, you're going to face a judgment. And uh, so we look at these things. Only two people ever got out of the world alive. One was a fellow named Enoch. Said he walked with God and the Lord took him. I think he's a picture of the rapture. He was taken out before the judgment. The judgment would have been the flood, right? He went out before the flood. And then the other one that got out was a fellow named Elijah. And he went up in a fiery chariot with fiery horses. He's an Old Testament prophet. But if you go to Genesis chapter 5, verse 24, and I'm not going to turn there, but it's where it talks about Enoch and how he was walked with God and the Lord took him. And so he got out alive. Now, some Christians will if the rapture takes place and you're still alive. But we can't count on that. Odds are we're going to die. Physically, we're going to die. Christians don't die spiritually. That's the second death. Only lost people suffer that. We suffer the first death, the physical death. But in Genesis chapter 5, if you go down through there, it lists all these people. And, and they died. And they died. And they died. Now Enoch didn't. But all the rest of them. Whoa. Uh, Methuselah lived at 969 years and I had a guy, a lady at the commons, asking me about that. You mean, you know, people lived eight, nine hundred years old? I believe they did. I think times were different then than they are now. And we could go into that, but I'm not going to go into that this morning. Then Adam lived 930 years. If you go back and study, you'll find Adam lived 930 years. That's a long time. Chances are most of us won't make a hundred. If you're 70 or 80, you're probably ready to go. Some days you'd say, well, Lord, I'm ready for you to just take me. When we get up, we're hurting really bad. But we even have hope in that because we're going to get a new body, aren't we? Amen. But there will be a judgment. You know, everybody died except these two men. Enoch and Elijah, even Jesus died. Didn't he die? Yes, he did. We celebrate his resurrection at Easter. The Gospels, the death, burial, and resurrection of Christ. It's part of it. But all of them, Jesus ter uh, uh, died. Every man and woman, boy and girl in this room, sooner or later we're going to die if the Lord doesn't come before we die physically. In the Old Testament, we read about men like uh, that lived eight, nine hundred years before they died. Most of us aren't going to make it that long. Uh, I, don't, I don't know. I know very few people live to be a hundred. I had a grandmother, what, a hundred and two or three? 
great grandmother, I'm four. That's a long time nowadays. And she lived by herself up until her 90s, didn't she? My, grand, my grandmother would go check on my great grandmother and take care of her. Grandma Woods, that was on my dad's side. But you know, when we think about these things, old uh, Methodist evangelist Sam Jones came in one evening and his wife says, uh, Sam, I want you to go visit the sheriff. He's dying. He's sick and he's dying. And uh, Sam Jones said, well, you know, he's an atheist. He doesn't believe in God. She said, I still want you to go visit him. You know, wives kind of have influence, don't they? Sometimes. <laughs> so he decides he better go because it might not be all happy at home if he doesn't. So he goes to visit the sheriff and he asks the sheriff, he says, uh, are you afraid to die? And the sheriff said, well, Sam, I've told you before I'm not afraid to die. And he said that he was in his bed sick and the preacher got down beside him and said, well, he said, what about the judgment? And he about jumped out of his bed. I hadn't thought about that. It, it, it'd be, it wouldn't be so bad if you just died and that was it. Well, that's what some people believe. Yeah. You're just going to die. I've had them tell me that. Usually they've told me that because they didn't want me preaching to them. <laughs> to get me to leave them alone. Well, I just think I'll die and that's it. Well, that's not what the Bible teaches. There's going to be a judgment after you die. That's right. So we need to realize these things. And so, like I say, the sheriff said, well, I hadn't thought about that. Have you ever thought about it? If you were to be judged by the Lord, I said I never thought about it. But you know, if we live like brutes and die like brutes, and they bury us and in the earth, and we just died, now was it? Wouldn't be so bad. But that's not the end. The Bible goes on to this to be absent. Our text verse in uh, verse twenty-seven is the point on the man wants to die, but what? But after this, the judgment. So just dying is not the end of it. There's more to it. You know, the judgment comes after death. Now for Christians, I think we're judged a lot of times in some ways before death. We're judged in Christ. But for lost people, and even for us, as to our works will be after death. And the great white thrones after their death. That's the lost people. The Christians will be judged at the Bema Seat Judgment. You'll get reward or lose rewards by how you lived. And there's plenty of scripture in this, but if I went to all these verses, we'd be here a long, long time this morning. But I can show you scripture on it. But you know, death usually comes when you least expect it. Does it slip up on some people? Sure does. Preacher was preaching in Washington, D.C., and gave the invitation. And uh, there was a man there that he knew wasn't a Christian. And uh, he went to the man and asked him if he was saved. And the fellow sort of shrugged his shoulders and said, I'm okay. I'm all right. And uh, that night, the wife, man's wife said, well, why did the preacher embarrass my husband? He's all right. He's all right. So you know, one very many days after that, the preacher gets a telephone call. He said, preacher, preacher, I need you to come to my house and pray for my husband. He's dying. So he got in his car and rushed across town went in to visit the fellow and his wife met him and, and uh, like I say, he writes there and the wife meets the preacher at the door and said, uh, go in and pray for him. 
And the preacher said, well, he's all right. Now the day you said he was all right. And she said, yeah, but he wasn't dying the other day. <laughs> Does it make a difference? Yeah. Well, well, if we think it's a long ways off, we got plenty of time. We don't have to worry about dying. Well, there's more to dying than just dying. You're going to answer to God. These people going around, I want justice. Do they, would you really want to stand before God like you are right now? Well, if you're saved, you could be okay. But if you're lost, you're sure not going to be okay. And even if you're saved and you're a Christian now, the will of God, I think that might be brought up at the judgment. But he wasn't dying then, but he's dying now. You know, right now, the Lord could be your Savior. But one day, he'll be your judge. That's right. I'd rather have him as a Savior than judging my sins if I were lost. Wouldn't you? You know, the judgment's uh, a certain. It's going to happen. It's appointed unto man once to die. But after this, the judgment. Death's appointed. God knows when you'll die, how you'll die. I don't know. I don't really want to know. I just trust the Lord. He knows the best. But I need to remember there's going to be a judgment after I die. Don't people need to remember that? Well, they don't want to think about that. They'd rather play the music loud and forget it. Yeah. It's like, you know, you get a noise in your car, so all you do is turn the radio up. <laughs> well, you don't hear it, but after a while, the car's going to break down, right? Well, and that's what a lot of people are doing. They're just ignoring it, putting it off. Don't put it off too long because the Lord will change from being where He could be your Savior to He'll be your judge. You better get with Him while He still your, can be your Savior. Amen. And some people laugh and scoff, and but the judgment's certain. The Bible says so. Right. Didn't I read it to you? Hebrews 9.27 it's right there in your Bible. Psalms 119, verse 89 says, Forever, O Lord, thy word is settled in heaven. If God says it, you better believe it. Amen. Isn't that true? Does God say there's going to be death and judgment? Well, are there any cemeteries around? Uh-huh. But like I say, some people laugh and make fun of these things. You know how they laughed at Noah. Noah says there's going to be a judgment come, a flood. Peter talks about that. Peter says a lot of people in these last days are going to laugh at it. They're going to say, well, it's been this way for 2,000 years and Jesus hadn't come back yet. What makes you think He's going to come back? When Noah preached 120 years and only eight people got saved, but did it flood? And if you read Peter about the third chapter, you're going to find out next time it won't be a flood, it'll be fire. That's right. You want to talk about global warming? <laughs> <laughs> well, global warming, we're all going to be dead in about six to ten years. It varies a little by who says it. It's going to get pretty hot for some people. But I don't stay awake nights worrying about global warming. I stay away. I, I try to be right with God. Amen. If I get right with God, I'm not too concerned about it. I figure I'm in God's hands. And if anybody can help me and protect me and get me through, it'd be the Lord. That's right. And so I just keep... And you know, even in Noah's day, I'm sure when it, they laughed, said it never has ever rained before. More mist come up out of the earth. Like a divine sprinkler system. Yeah. Uh -huh. That's the way it describes it in the Bible. But then what happened when the first sprinkle drops come? 
Carol said she was out the other day and there was a sprinkle drop about like this hit on the windshield. Big drops. Well, I imagine they started getting their little rafts put together then. Because <laughs> Noah, they'd already gone in the ark and the ark's Jesus. Yeah. If you're in Christ, you're safe. Amen. And the Lord shuts the door and once He shuts the door, you can't get out even if you want to. That's right. Until God get you out and then God will open the door and then He'll tell you, go forth and tell some people about how you got saved. Amen. So you come into the ark, into Christ, and then you need to go forth That's right. and go tell forth. people about Christ. That's good. So they'll get in the ark. But a lot of them built little rafts, I'm sure. Probably some of them climbed up the trees. Some of them probably went up into the mountains. Right, they, uh, they probably thought it was a little strange when all the animals started coming to Noah. Yeah, yeah. Said, boy, that's a, quite a phenomenon. <laughs> <laughs> Unique experience. Uh, they never seen anything like that before. They hadn't seen rain before. That's right. They laughed and made fun of it. People are laughing and making fun of Jesus and Christians in the Bible today. Yes. In America. I've never seen it like this before. In America. Well, I think we're living at a crossroads. That's right. I really do. We're gonna need we need to decide which way we're going. Now, you can build you a little raft if you want, but I think I'd get in the ark. Amen. And the ark is Christ and the gospel, and you need to get saved and live for God. You know, those rafts were all right as long as the sun was shining. Religious rafts. People got them. church membership, baptism, good works. Don't they? Yeah, once the storms come. But once it starts raining, once the doors shut on the ark, it's too late. Those rafts won't last for eternity, but the ark will. Amen. We'll be safe in Christ forever. It's eternal, everlasting life. The third point I want to give you, the judgment's universal. Some debate about was the flood universal? <laughs> yeah. Well, if you start reading how high it was up over the mountaintops, yes, it was universal. There wasn't any place you could go to hide. Matter of fact, remember he sent the birds out? He sent a dove and he sent a, what was the other one? Is it a crow? A raven. 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 A black raven. Pretty much a black raven. Yeah. It's a crow. Now, some people sound racist. Oh, no. <laughs> black and white. I used to have black and white TV. You know, I walk around out here, I don't see all this racism I hear in the news. Amen. I don't see it. When I go to the commons, I see interracial marriage. I see white people with little black children. Yeah. The other way around. You don't have to take my word for it go out there and walk around. That's right. Don't listen to the news that's controlled. And it is. Both ways. Mm -hmm. and there's got to be, God, God's got balance. Amen. Most of the time, somebody says, are you an Armenian or a Calvinist? I'm, I just believe the Bible. Amen. <laughs> huh? Amen. I think I'd be a lot better off just go by what the Bible it says, whosoever will, but yet then it talks about the elect and the predestined. No, I, I think I'd be wasting my time to trying to sort, sort all that out. I'm just going to preach whosoever will. And then the Lord will sort them out. He's going to send the angels and they're going to reap a harvest. And then they're going to bundle the tares in bunches and burn them. That's right. Now you get to get into that as that works or actually people, but probably both. That's right. Amen. That'd be my best guess. But I base my guests on, I'm like the weatherman, I, I have some facts in the Bible I base my guesses on. Amen. As long as I base what I believe on the Bible, I think I'm pretty safe. If I just get into what I think, I get on dangerous ground. That's right. I need some scripture evidence for what I believe. 
And uh, like I say, the judgment's universal. Romans chapter 14, verse 12 says, So then every one of us shall give an account of himself to God. Amen. How many? Everyone. Romans 14, 12. Saved and lost. Good Christians, bad Christians. Real wicked sinners. Not as wicked sinners. You know, there's some uh, lost people that are pretty good people. I, I hate to see that. I'd like to see them go from Jesus just going to be their judge to their Savior because their lives. Carol, you, when I was in Bible college, there was a nurse. So Carol was a nurse aide, and there was a nurse there. Marlis Nim, she's raised on a farm. She hadn't been out in the world too much, I don't think. Matter of fact, the sewing machine Carol's got, she gave it to her. It's one of these real old ones, but Carol still likes it. It's better than new ones. You know, they used to build things better than they do now. They just throw it together now. But Marlis and Ames got saved. High Street Baptist, I believe. And uh, she uh, really didn't change her life. She wasn't drinking, so she didn't have to quit drinking. She didn't smoke cigarettes, so she didn't have to quit smoking cigarettes or whatever, you know, all those things. She was a good person. But if she hadn't trusted Jesus, Jesus would have been her judge and not her Savior. But I think Carol see her in heaven, don't you? But it's a universal. Everybody's going to stand before God one day. The most wicked and the most saintly. We'll all stand before God. And we're not going to get up there and tell God how it's going to be. <laughs> I hear that one all, all the time. Well, when I get there, I'm going to tell God. You're not going to tell God anything. <laughs> you think you're smarter than God? Well, I think it's in Romans 11 where it uh, talks about how we can't counsel God and tell God how to do things. And, but some people think they're smarter than God. You know, God's going to judge the secret things. You know, there's things about you that nobody knows but you. Uh huh. But God knows all about them. They're open to Him. So He's going to judge the secret things. You might ask, "Will God judge me about uh, uh, if you uh, were indicted in court? They'll produce a bill of." particulars in which they'll list all the things you're charged with. I think God will have some list because He won't need a list. He probably got a photographic memory. Well, He's got an omniscient memory. Even better. Uh -huh. He was probably there and saw you do whatever you did mm -hmm. when you did it. That's right. He you knows all about Romans chapter 2 and verse 16 says, In the day when God shall judge the secrets of the men by Jesus Christ according to my gospel. It says right there, In the day when God shall judge the secrets of men by Jesus Christ according to my gospel. Numbers 32, 23, the part of the verse says, Be sure your sins will find you out. Of course, I never quoted that one to Martin Bryan much. I always use Galatians 6, 7. Be not deceived, God is not mocked. For whatsoever man soweth that shall he also reap. And a lot of these people think they can go out here and shoot people, shoot bullets into the air, hit little kids and kill them, and they're going to get away with it. Yeah. And the family says, I want justice. There will be justice. Amen. Praise the Lord. The courts in America. You know, they don't need more laws in America. They need to enforce the laws Amen. we have. Let's go. 100%. It's really... They don't, well, we'll take all the guns away. Most of the people doing this stuff don't have legal guns in the first place. That's just craziness. Plus, let's defund the police and then not let anybody have a gun to protect themselves. Right. Adolf Hitler did that kind of stuff to the Jews. Right. Killed 8 million of them. Although there was one place, I think the Warsaw Ghetto, where the Jews did have some guns. That's good history. Well, you'll have to go back and check me out. 
I could be wrong, but I don't think so, or I wouldn't have said it. But God even knows the secrets of our hearts. The Bible says He knows the thoughts and intents of your heart in Hebrews chapter 4. He knows what you think. What you'd like to do, you don't get done. You ever want to do something for God and you don't get it done? I think you might even get credit for that. Amen. Huh? Well, I think your heart's important to God. He works from the inside out. If he can't get your heart right, he'll never get the outside right. And that's a lot of the problems. Well, let's pass some more laws. Well, what people need is Jesus. Amen. They need a heart transplant. And the one that did the very first heart transplant, I believe, was Jesus. Right. Wasn't that Bernard guy over, I think, and it was in Africa? Yeah. I, met, I, I, you know, I, I remember bits and pieces. I guess I could ask my phone. <laughs> <laughs> I've even got a smart flip phone. Well, I'm moving up. Carol said I need to get one like hers. Every time she hands hers to me, it goes crazy. I don't think it likes me. Usually I give it back to her. Anyway, judgment, uh, what's the judgment issue? What, what did you do with uh, Jesus? Isn't that the question? What did you do with Jesus? That's bottom line. Do you accept Him as your Savior? If you're safe to accept Him as your Savior, I think you're on pretty safe grounds there. Amen. But if you haven't, He's just going to be your judge. And you'll end up dying the first death, the physical death, and the spiritual Amen. death. Right. And you'll be separated from God and His people forever. Now that's what the Bible teaches. 1 Timothy chapter 5, verse 24. Some men's sins are open beforehand, going before to judgment, and some men they follow after. You know, we Christians confess, confess our sins as we go along through life. Okay, the penalty of sin was taken care of when you got saved. Wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. The penalty of sin, the main sin is rejecting Christ. But if you accept Christ, then you got these little sins. That's about it. He forgave every sin I'll ever do. Positionally, that's true. But He won't be able to reward you unless you're His child by getting saved. Huh? Of course, you're adopted into the family. Jesus the only begotten. We get into all kinds of things here. but You know, as we go through life, does the Lord ever convict your heart? Did you do anything about it? When He convicted your heart, did you do something with that? Well, I, like Manny says, we don't go in a little booth. We just bow our head wherever we're at and ask the Lord to forgive us. Amen. And then, you, ought, you shouldn't stop there. You ought to ask Him to help you not do it anymore. That's right. You ought to want to change and do better. And so, I think that's where we need to be with that. You know, what you do about the salvation of your soul you have to do before you die. That's right. Once you get die, you're not physically. You're not. You can't get saved. You know when you, your breath ceases, you know you're going to be in heaven or hell. There's no in between. It's going to be one or the other. What makes the difference? Which one you're going to be? Where you're going to be? Hebrews chapter 9, verse 27. And it is appointed unto men once to die, but after this the judgment. It'll, it'll be what we believe about Jesus. And I had another verse, and let's see if I get it written down here. Okay, it's 1 John chapter 1, verse 7. 1 John chapter 1, verse 7. And the blood of Jesus Christ, His Son, cleanseth us from all sin. 
Oh. Got to write that verse down. 1 John 1 7. Jesus' blood washes away all of our sin. Right. But if you reject that, then you're going to have to stand before God and He'll judge you for your sin. But if you accept that and let Jesus take your place and die in your place and let His blood... Baptismal water does not wash any sins away. There was a little boy who got baptized out here at the Wesleyan Church. And his dad got baptized. And a little boy, he gets up and he's look, looking in the baptistry. And his dad was named Chuck and they, they called his son Chucky. And he, he's looking in the baptistry and he said, well, Chucky, what are you looking for? He said, I'm looking for all those sins that got washed away. Water didn't do it. Jesus' blood did. Amen. And uh, we will face a judgment. Lost people face the judgment. Saved people will. But the Christians have a mediator. It's Jesus. He's the one that stands between us and our sins. And His blood washed our sins away. Let's all stand.